To install Anaconda Navigator, visit the Anaconda distribution page, click on the download button for your operating system, which could be one of these. Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Provide your email address and then check your email for the download link. Once you have the installer, run the file and follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. The first task uh, installation of Anaconda was rather straightforward. Jupyter Notebook, as uh, you may know, is an open source web-based interactive computing environment, allowing you to create and share documents containing live code, uh, equations, visualization, and narrative text. When we say open source, it means it's free and uh, developers actually can work on this environment to improve the quality of some functions, creating new function as part of this uh, open source actually content. This Jupyter Notebook is widely actually used in data science, research and education for tasks such as data analysis, machine learning, and scientific research, and also providing an accessible and versatile actually platform for interactive programming and data exploration. So when you open Anaconda Navigator, you typically land on the home actually tab. And here you can see a list of installed, already installed environments and access various tools and application for data science, as I already mentioned, such as RS Studio and a Jupyter Notebook. So let's start by pressing or clicking on launch actually button. of Jupyter Notebook, okay. So, when I clicked on the launch, as you can see, it typically unusually opens uh, the Jupyter Notebook interface in your default web browsers, okay? So, the default web browser is the one actually set as default on your computer's actually operating system. As you can see, the URL here is HTTP localhost colon a port number a slash three. Okay, so is the web address for the Jupyter Notebook interface running on your local actually your local machine? Okay, so whether it's in a computer lab or your computer. This actually means you're accessing your locally actually running Jupyter Notebook server and are currently viewing the file browser where you can create, open, and manage Jupyter Notebook files and folders. You can use this folder, this interface, to navigate your file system and interact with the Jupyter Notebook and files, okay? Let's say we're going to create a folder uh, in data, let, let's call data analysis. So if you go with the default actually directory that we have, look for a new actually button and then create a folder by clicking on this. Uh, it will be created a folder by default untitled uh, folder, okay? So now I'm going to actually rename this uh, folder. Just click on the checkbox left hand side of the name and then change it and then press rename. OK, and then rename it. And now you will have a data analysis folder. OK, so now we're going to go 
into the data analysis folder. Yes. And now I'm going to actually create my first Python uh, three program. So again, excuse me, I'm going to go to uh, uh, press the new button in the toolbar of Jupyter Notebook environment and then press Python three. Okay, so again, I mean, when you create a new Python 3 file, by default, the name would be untitled. Okay, so and now actually by pressing on this, uh, clicking on the name untitled, I can change it to, let's say, first program. Viewing data sets. OK, first program viewing data set and then rename. Right. OK. So as you can see here, we have code markdown, heading, row and be convert. I'm going to actually go with a markdown and say this is my first program. for data analysis and visualization. OK, so. I'm going to actually add a new cell here by clicking on the plus insert cell below and you can. Change the order of these cells by using up and down arrow, OK? Pandas is one of the famous libraries uh, in Python, actually allowing you to access it, allowing you to actually working with different type of data, relational, labeled, or uh, any type of data during this uh, environment and in Python in general. OK, uh, so. The next actually library that we're going to use here, uh, import NumPy. NumPy as a NP. So we're using PD instead of pandas and we're using NP instead of NumPy for short. OK, so NumPy actually is a library again in Python, which allow allowing you to work with arrays and uh, this tool this actually type of uh, data structure, which is the most popular one in one of the most popular ones in in Python. OK, OK. So to run this actually cell, you can either press this button or press here, this uh, arrow near the cell or press control enter, whichever you like. And when it's showing a star, this means it's running. OK, which would be uh, very quick and without any problem. OK, so because we're going to actually look at the wine data set and wine data set is as part of the scikit-learn data set, uh, we can actually use a scikit data set uh, sklearn dot data set. OK, so when I'm actually typing data. if I press tab, it's automatically showing the rest of the command or name, import, load. It's a wine data set, yeah, underscore wine. And as you can see, uh, by pressing enter, I can actually uh, automatically get the rest of the variables name, okay? A package, okay, scikit learn package from scikit uh, learn package or library, right? So if I run this, it's run without any error, okay? So now we're going to see we extracted, we got the load wine uh, data set from scikit learn package. So 
if I use load, if I use load and then underscore wine, open close parenthesis, so and I run this, I will get loads of information here. Data, yeah, an array, numeric numbers here, and then target variable, this data variable, target variable, and then again, array with zero, one, and two. And then target names, as you can see here, are arrays including three classes, class underscore zero, class one, and class two. And then loads of other text-based information, path, view uh, properly, properly this data set. This is a comment, but you can actually run it. No harm for this. So if I add another line, so now we're going to actually load. We're going to load. I create a new variable called wine equals load underscore press tab load wine and then parenthesis. So I'm getting this load wine function, extracting data, all data into a new variable called wine. Okay. So let's say capital X equals wine. If you press dot and press tab, you can see all the all the methods or all the actually components of these uh, variables, or uh, in this case, it's going to be, let's say, data. And y equals wine, again, dot, press tab, target. Because we know that data and target are two arrays to data structure in the format of arrays in this uh, load wine or wine data set. OK, so we get data from wine or target variable or uh, this data set. So the first one is technically feature or we call attributes. And the second one is labels. Yeah, labels or let's say wine classes. OK, if I run this. There is no error here, so now we can actually print X. You either actually write print parentheses X or just X and then run it. So if you run this, you will get an array of. Features all the features that we have or we can see in this data set, OK? And likewise, we can use Y, print this Y, and this is the class label, uh, class labels or targets variable for each individual uh, samples in this case, OK?